trying to get the kids ready and they slow and sometimes being late ain't always our fault. <laughs> <laughs> but before I can get up here and talk about anything, I gotta go before God. I know you guys are praying, but I just need to take a second. Thank you, gracious Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for all the blessings. Thank you, Lord God. Father, just show up today. Lord, let your word go forward. Decrease me, Lord God, and you increase. Give us a word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Last Sunday we started talking about uh, we were on Colossians three and twelve, where God talked about that He had chosen us, that we were His chosen people. Therefore, it is God's chosen people, holy. This is Colossians 3, 12 through 14. Therefore, it is God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Clothe yourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have grievances against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which bonds them all together in perfect unity. And I chose that scripture, and we talked about uh, the gifts that God gives us. And then Pastor Daniels, he, you know, displayed that about the fivefold ministry. And then um, that the fivefold ministries are different from your gifts. But what we, and then uh, we talked about praying for the Holy Ghost was the first point for us um, when you're being chosen by God, that you pray for the Holy Spirit and second, consider your calling. I'm all over the place this morning, but God can work this out. Amen. Amen. Okay, and praise and worship God. These three things that will help us to consider our gifts that God has given us and to help us walk in Christian love. And Pastor told me that I needed to expound on the subject for at least 10 minutes and then we start with questions and answers. I am new to this so I don't mind asking for help. Hey, Miss Patricia. <laughs> what I can say about Colossians 3, 12, and 14 is as being called by God. This scripture right here tells me how I am supposed to be. And it is not easy. It is not easy always trying to operate in compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. And, and these are the same things as the fruits of the Spirit. You know, it takes the Holy Spirit to come upon us in order for us to always operate in that. And of course, none of us are perfect, so we cannot always operate in that. Just the other day, I had an experience and I was um, dealing with a client and the client didn't have anywhere to stay and I let her stay at one of the houses and and then when she was ready to go back to New York, I purchased a ticket for her, and then she changed her mind just like that. So the ticket was non-refundable, so she had told me, well, if I can't get my money back to call her, she would give me my money, right? So I called her to tell her that the ticket was non-refundable, and she sent me back a derogatory message. Told me that I should, her wife sent me back a derogatory message. Told me I should mind my business and I should have never got involved. And I did not respond to that message. 
Trust me, my flesh wanted to respond, but I did not respond to that message. So the next day, the phone rang, and it was her. I did not pick up the phone. Later on that day, the phone rang, it was her again. I refused to pick up that phone because I said, you are not going to take me out of my character. Because if I pick up this phone and you start saying some things to me, I just may respond in some derogatory messages myself. So later on that night, it was like 10 o'clock at night, and I'm like, OK, this lady's been calling me all day long. Let me just answer the phone and tell her, please stop calling my phone. You don't have to refund me for the ticket. What I did was out of love, compassion, kindness, humility. You don't have to worry about it. But when I picked up the phone, when I tell you that there is a God, when I say, but God, this woman was bawling on the other end. She told me that her spirit was not right, that she had to keep calling until she told me, until she got me, to tell me that she was sorry for what she had said to me. She cried on that phone, and she start, started telling me about the things that were going on in her life, and I'll just listen. I just listen. And I forgave her, and I wound up praying with this lady on the phone, and she accepted Christ in her life. You know, that's how God works. Amen. That's how you are chosen. Just being there for somebody, just making sure that you stay in place, even though it's hard. It's hard, and I know all of us in here have times when we want to cut somebody out. I'm real good at that. I've, I've got to tell you, I ain't even going to stand up here and lie. I'm real good at that. I can cut you out and pray for you in the same breath and then lead you to Christ. I will, because at the end of that conversation, I'm going to, God is going to have the last word. Because while you're talking to me and I'm talking to you, trust me, the Holy Spirit is coming in and talking to me, and I'm going to feed it back to you one way or the other. Because after I finish, I'm going to be like, an amen. You know, and that's just like another client I have. Every time I see this man, he wants to argue with me. And you know what I do now? When I see him, I make sure I have my gospel music playing and I start praying to him as soon as I see him. That's Clyde. <laughs> I had to start praying because people will take you out of your character. And it is not the people, it is the spirits that attach themselves to people that will make you want to go off. But we have to be strong, and then when we fall, we have to repent. We have to repent and ask God for forgiveness, and then we have to forgive ourselves, and then when at the proper time, make an amends to individuals and keep it moving. And then if they don't want to accept your apology, the Bible says shake the dust off of your feet and keep on moving. So that that's just operating. That's my analogy of operating in kindness and compassion, you know, doing what's right even when it hurts and waiting for the Holy Spirit to talk to you because it is God that said, pick up that phone and hear what this woman has to say. It is definitely not me. And then to pray for you. And I didn't even ask her for my $80. I didn't even ask her. I wanted to ask her at the end of the conversation, but I didn't. I said it did come from me. It came from God. You know, and I'm sure all of us got some examples, and Pastor, I don't know where you want to go with this, but praying for the Holy Ghost was the first point to come over and talk to us, come in us, and walk through us when we are around other people. Um, John 14, 16 says, But the Helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that he has said. And that is wonderful that Christ, that the Holy Spirit will bring to us what Christ has said to us for us, us operating in compassion and in the fruits of the Spirit, humility and love. And what gets, what's, what's the greatest thing about it for me is he said that above all these things that love is the greatest. So if I got love, I'm good. And then when I'm doing a self-inventory, a personal inventory of myself, do I love people today? Regardless of who you are and what you do and what you say, even how you treat me, I know that I have that love. And I don't know how I got it, but I got it. <laughs> but I know how I got it, but I'm telling you, when it's embedded deep down in your soul, 
that you got to love people regardless. My job is to love on people, however, whatever it takes to love you, to help you get to where you need to be. You know, and I was talking to pastor that my ministry is a housing ministry for homeless people, you know, and then to lead them to Christ. And I said, well, pastor, I cannot lead them to Christ because people can't hear me if they worried about where they gonna sleep and what they gonna eat. Amen? Amen. Y'all gotta talk back to me. <laughs> Let's look at something. You are, you are on Colossians chapter 3, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 12 and 18. 12 to 14. They put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowers of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Then faith this is forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. I'm reading these three verses for a reason. If you look at verse 12, without verse 12, it's difficult to do verse 18. Mm. And without 12 and 13, you cannot do 14. Mm. What do I mean? One of the most difficult things to do is to forgive somebody. I'm sure we all know that. We might pretend, we might fake. You know, Christian, we love to pretend a lot. Oh, I forgive you. You're lying. <laughs> and you know it. Because if you forgive somebody and you see that person it still hurts you, how can you call that forgiveness? You forgive somebody and you still go home and call if you are friend on the phone and still talk about that person. Or if you see what the, what that person, this woman did to me. Ah. Hmm. Hey, hey. But when you see her or him, you say, oh, I forgive you. You know that you are lying. The reason is that if you do not allow the fruit or the spirit to be made manifest in your life, you, it's difficult to forgive somebody. Hallelujah. It, it's going to take making. Humility. People don't, when we say humility, people don't understand what it means. So you think that if you walk it somehow, you dress, somehow you dress conservatively, you walk like a gentleman or, or like a lady, you are humble. Or if you don't dress like others are dressing, showy and all that, you are humble. That is not true. Humility is of the heart. Amen. You can put on flashy dress. You can drive flashy car. You can live in a mansion and be humble. Amen. Because people attach humility to, to poverty, to lack. You know, if you lack and you behave in a very, you know, quiet, it's like you don't hurt anybody. That's pretension. That, that is not humility. So once you, you allow the spirit of humility to come into your life, plus all other gifts or fruit of the Holy Spirit, it is when they begin to manifest in your life, you come to a point in your life where you overlook what people do to you. What people do to you does not matter any longer. 
Because what matters to you is how to please God. And you have to understand that sometimes, if not most of the time, there's a spirit behind every action that is not of God. Even in the house of heaven, though we are all Christian, we go to church, many are still being tormented by the devil. Yes. And sometimes we use anybody that is able that that's yielding even to destroy many things. But deep in you, you will not even see it. You will think that you are still doing the right thing. Even people are around you might say, hey, you are right. What you did is okay. Because you don't see that what is happening is that the enemy is using you to destroy some things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So but when you are allow the fruit of the spirit to manifest in your life, you will overlook what somebody is doing to you. Instead, begin to pray for them. Because you know that it's not them, it's the enemy. And that is how it's going to be easy to forgive. So uh, most of them, like I said, we all pretend that forgiving you forgive. is a lie. Then when, if you are not able to forgive, then charity, kindness, mm -hmm. will be very difficult. I mean, for instance, if God is, or God wants you to help somebody that offended you, mm -hmm. how are you going to do that if you don't forgive that person? It will be difficult to help somebody. Maybe somebody that is in need of help. And this somebody that had offended you. Maybe somebody that did not appreciate the previous help that you rendered to him or her. And now you look at that person, you want to help that person again. Mm -hmm. How will you do it? It's going to be difficult. How do you know that you have forgiven somebody when they wronged you? Because when you get the opportunity to pay them back and you don't, then you know that you have forgiven them. When you have that opportunity to do something wrong to them like they've done to you, and you don't do something wrong to them, you, you are able to walk away, or you are able to still shake their hand or love them, you know that you have forgiven them. And, and it takes practice. It, 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 it is, definitely takes practice. All of us have heard. I think last week I told you that Colossians, particularly Colossians chapter 3, is loaded with uh, ingredients that the believer needs to live a successful Christian life. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at where you read, where I wasn't here, but verse 12, you have to make an effort. It's a put on. It is not the Holy Spirit who's going to put it on for you. The Holy Spirit has borne the thing inside of you once you receive the Holy Spirit. You know, some of these things that read, I was pondering over it, some of them are the qualities that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. Now, it is up to us to put it on, to, like they said, put on the whole armor of God. The, God says, put it on. Nobody is going to put it on for That's you. Right. That's you right. have to make the effort to do yeah. it. Yeah. If you think it's going to come automatically, that, that's not what the Bible is saying. Mm -hmm. Put it on. That's make right. an effort. Now, I, I, let me take you back to verse 1. I say, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. When you begin to set your, uh, your, your attention on things on the earth, on earth here, you know, this struggle, this friction, you know, work up because me, whatever you, what like always say, you say about me, if I hear it, I don't hear it. That's me. I don't care what you say, but you no, know, God is the judge. God sees you, God sees my heart. But let as allow the spirit of oneness, the spirit of togetherness, like he says, say, say, put on therefore, as the elect mm -hmm. of God. Are you the elect of God? Mm -hmm. If you are the elect of God, then we have to seize those things. You see, the, one of the efforts is to cease doing things that would not please God. Absolutely. To cease th doing things that will you know, uh, hamper our walk with God. Here it talks about life. 
And when you go to Revelation, say lie. He has uh, actually equated lie with all mongers, uh, witchcraft, and other things which will be destroyed in the end. Mm -hmm. You see, so lying to each other, it says here, we should not lie to each other. That's right. If it is plain, be plain. You know, don't talk behind somebody. If it is, you know, that is some of the things, they are all what? The fruits of the word, of the flesh, the works of the flesh. But we should allow, make effort to allow the Holy Spirit to, you know, uh, uh, bear fruits in our lives. Like I said, it's not going to happen to me. You have to make the effort that I am living right. I'm not going, when you go on and say, it talks about, so it, uh, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have quarrel against anyone, even as Christ forgiven, forgave you, so also do ye. Mm -hmm. And above all things, put on charity. Good. Now, verse 8 says, But now ye also put off. Verse 8. He said, Put off all this. Who is going to put it off for you? <laughs> Good. No, God is not going to put it off for you. He's telling you, Put it off. If you think it's going to happen automatically, you are a liar. Sure. You have given your life to God. He still have, you still have your will. Mm -hmm. So you have to will to do what? To put okay. it off. Blasphemy, malice, wrath, anger, filthy communications out of your mind. He said, put it on. And then he comes down to say, put on this. As you put off this, now you are putting or you are going to put on this one. Because why? When you go up, you say you are now a new person in Christ. If a new person, you don't carry the old coat. You carry the new coat. Amen. And the new coat is what he has described in verse 12. Amen. And, and to me, when you put on the put on the new, some people don't know how to put on compassion. You have to practice that. You have to be that taught is, these exactly. taught the fruits of the spirits and how to practice them in your life. And that's why Sunday school Bible study, all of that is so important or to have a spiritual mentor. How do I be compassionate? How do I get humble? You know so, sometimes we make mistakes. You see, the Bible doesn't say we should not get angry. Somebody will you it's get the angry. Sin. The Bible doesn't say we should not. You get angry, but don't let it go beyond the, mm -hmm. the sun. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The sun's uh, down, mm -hmm. where the sun is going down. As soon as you realize it, you just let it go. Don't remember, that's me. Mm -hmm. When you do something, uh, if I don't talk about it, I won't talk about it. But if you do it and I want to talk, I'll call you between me and you. Mm -hmm. This is oh, what happened. That's all. I forget about it. We are moving on. But if you continue to hold me inside of you, you are killing yourself. That is what we don't know. I don't know nothing about what is going on. But it is inside your, you. You are killing yourself. Because the very moment you see me, either you throw your face or you don't want to greet me, who is blocking the flow of the Spirit of God? You. I don't know. And uh, uh, a, a medical uh, science say that when you get angry beyond certain limit, your body begins to emit chemicals, dangerous chemicals, into your system. You know, cancer and some of these things are the result of anger, yeah, bitterness, and other things. Yes, so people, we need to come to a place where get angry. If I offend you, get angry. But come to me, Pastor Daniel. You did it. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. And then we are going. But if you sleep over eight, I don't like sleeping over What do you mean anything. when you say I didn't know? No, I, I don't agree with that. No, no, maybe know I... what they be doing? No, I, my mind, maybe I thought I was joking or I was doing something, but you okay, took it. Okay, maybe that's for you. You took it off offensive, right? And I, I like, I, no, sometimes we do. Yeah. And maybe you took it so serious, right? Yeah. Just call me. 
Yeah. And then the church say, let me, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Amen. It was a joke. Amen. Patricia. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, if you look at that verse, I know Pastor has explained it, Pastor Daniel also has explained that the first thing there is forbearing before the others follow. And what is forbearing is just having patience with one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we don't have is patience. Mm -hmm. Especially this past world, you know, is patience. Somebody can do us some, you know, the Bible says we should uh, forgive how many times? Seven days that seven times. We don't have patience for the third one. Mm -hmm. We don't even have patience for the second one, mm -hmm. you know? So if we can have patience with one another, I think the other fruit will take its place, you know? But one of the problems is patience. Personally, like me, I don't have patience. We shall pray for God to give me patience, you know? Because sometimes it's very hard to bring that patience up. But if you look, that is the first thing that is written there before the other fruit can follow. So if we have patience with one another, somebody hurt us, and I have a patience to see, you know, how he's going to react or how I'm going to react. Just like you, you said the first story this morning, you have that patience not to pick that one up at that time. If we can manifest those patience in our love, in our life, I think it will help us to align ourselves with the other fruit of this. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I agree with you. You see, but this is where it's a put it on. We have to make the effort. If you don't have patience, you have to make the effort towards, you know, it's being patient. She that says that's for that's bearing, true, which is patience, it, and, uh -huh. and when you, you see, pray for patience, this seems yeah. like everything you, takes forever. But you yeah. work towards it. Everything. You see, it's a put on, so you work towards it. If I don't have patience, if I, I get angry quickly, I have to find a way. I have to see somebody seek advice. I easily get angry, and I don't know how somebody have been there before and is out. He can, oh, look, this is what I did, and I'm out of this. You need to ask, because if you don't ask, how would you know? Absolutely. Amen. So we are here to learn from each other. Absolutely. And nobody has arrived. Oh. That's right. None of us have arrived. We don't arrive until we're dead. We're dead. Again, we're all of these, easy. all of these, all these gifts take practice in mm -hmm. our life. We have to practice these things every day. When stuff come up, patience, tolerance, even understanding, all of this it takes practice in order for us to move to the calling, the gift that God has given us to do in His ministry. Matthew 28 says that we are to make disciples. So how do we get there? We have to start here with being compassion and kindness, having humility and gentleness and patience. We have to be before we can go and do anything. We cannot do any of the things in the church. Pastor can't be a pastor. Pastor Daniel can't be an associate pastor without practicing these things. But the point is, is that we practice it. Mm -hmm. We practice it. When somebody make you mad, you forgive them. When you, just like when we fall in love in relationships and then we fall out, don't we try to fall in love again with someone else? Yeah. It's, it's practice. <clears throat> Everything is a practice. None of us are gonna walk into our calling. We have to practice these things. One thing I saw about Mother's Day, and it was like the greatest day in this church I ever had. We all practice the same thing at the same time. The same thing at the same time. It was just about all of us coming together. We were unified. We were in one accord. That took practice. That took practice. And we'll do it again. And we'll get better and better at it. You don't stop at one thing, you keep going. And it was such a blessing here in the church that Sunday. And I knew right then and there, this is where I want to be because we're all practicing the same thing. We're all in one accord trying to get to the same place, which is our calling in Christ Jesus. Because we are all called to minister or pastor or evangelist. We are all called to the fivefold ministry at some point some way, somehow, even this to teach. Again, I said to be a doorkeeper, to be an evangelist, to have the gifts of help. We all have it. 
And if we don't start right here within ourselves, we will never get there and we will never be able to save anybody else. And I don't know about y'all, but when I die and go to heaven, I want God to say, job well done. Yeah. Because I led some souls to Christ. Because I invited you to my church and you got saved. I was taught in seminary school that we are not responsible for the outcome, but we are responsible for planting that seed. And, that, and God, will, uh, God will water that seed. But we have our job to do. And so I'm going to turn this mic over to Pastor. And, 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 and I was I, I don't know whether we read our verse four and five, but there there is a very uh, important uh, things in four and five, and I want to read. And probably we can continue the next week if Pastor Power will allow you. He said, he <laughs> said, uh, when Christ, who is our life? When Christ, who? It's our life. Pastor has yes. said it. We, the life we are living, Paul said, is no more ours. But the Christ who liveth in yes. me. And Colossian is saying, as if Christ who is our, our life shall appear, then shall we or ye also appear with him in glory. Yes. Then he goes on to say, then he said, I will put the therefore before that. I say, therefore, Mortify your members, your body, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, that homosexual thing that we talk about, evil compiscence, uh, and covetousness. He said, which is idolatry? Convert. Co uh, co uh, covetousness, he has equated it to idolatry. So, believers, not only this, but let us say, mortify, you know, concretize ourselves against these things. God is going, not going to mortify, He has given you the ability, that's why the Holy Spirit is with us, the ability to be able to walk over this. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You asked the question, how do we know when you are forgiving somebody? We are forgiving somebody. This forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand how you answered it. You, you were trying to answer it then. It was somebody wronged you. And how you do you, have a believer? Them. How do you know oh, yeah. that you have forgiven them? Yeah. When you have that opportunity to get back at them, to retaliate. Yes, you to don't. retaliate and you don't, you know that you have forgiven. Supposing, uh, supposing, no, 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 no. Let, let me tell you. Supposing I put it this way that you know that you're forgiven somebody. When you see that person now, you don't remember yeah. that deed that caused the problem in the first place. That you don't remember it. You, you remember yeah, by you it. Say, yeah, you, you, you can remember, you can remember no. it, but we say, we but say this heart, one other you don't want to You go remember, back and but it doesn't oh, hurt yeah. you yeah. anymore. If you remember it, you have oh, no. You, you, you remember it, but you don't react. Your mind is there. No, you, no, it, no. Your mind will remember. But, so you're not working with your mind this time. If you remember, if you remember, you don't have to. You don't have to. When you see that person and you don't remember it, and the spirit of uh, this thing doesn't come into you. When you see and everything is normal, like it was before. You mean when you don't feel yeah. it? When you don't feel, you don't see anything. No, you, you see, that's the feeling. That's the, it doesn't hurt you. Emotion, your emotion, no, there will be no emotional, you If know, you ever yeah. remember it, then you haven't forgotten it. Oh, no. No, you can't remember. No, no. Exactly. Say that again. Can you say that? put it in your mind just to see your reaction. That's right. You don't react. You're always going to be tested. It's always a test. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Even if you do see that person and you will remember because there are some things that happened in our life long time ago mm -hmm. that really used to hide us, that when you even think of our age, you share tears and cry because of that hide that was in your heart. Mm -hmm. It reached a place in our life that we use it as a testimony now. Yes. We use it and talk about it and we laugh Hallelujah. about it. Because we know that God has overcome all 
those things. Yeah. So we'll get in contact with that person and we'll just sit there and remember those things and we'll just laugh. Yes. Yes. Talk yeah. to that person. Right. Yes. You still remember. You still remember. You still remember. Unless you got all the knowledge, unless you want all somebody, the memory, the specific detail begin to fade with the passage of time. They begin to fade. You will sit down and start giving account in detail, all oh, this person did this. How do you know that you are forgiven somebody? You might not have opportunity to retaliate, so it's not always if you have opportunity to retaliate. You might not even want to retaliate, but yet you don't forgive. It is when you, the heart is gone. You do something to me that time, I feel so much hurt. But because of the love of Jesus Christ, I forgive you. When I see you, I don't feel the heart anymore. When I see you, you have a chance to bless somebody, let's say there are three people to be blessed, and you are one of them. I will not want to bless you and leave you because yes, right. you offended me last time. Mm -hmm. I'll bless you too. So you have to understand that. But the specific details, initially, will still be intact. But gradually, they start to fade away. If you kill my mother, for instance, I, after a while, I forgive you. You think that when I see you, I, I will not remember that you killed my mother? There should be a time when you see me, you embrace me, and don't even remember. And I will not remember that you killed my mother. <laughs> 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 Let's move it to next week. Let's move it to, what's the question? 
Does God remember our sins that He already forgiven? We are not God. God. We are not God. But we are created to be like God. We are created to be, but we are not created to be God. He said He remembers our sin no more. Yes. There's no way in the Bible that God said, "Do not remember." No, he said, "Forgive." Yeah. There's no way you will see somebody that did evil to you, and you will say, "I don't remember." That's why I don't remember what you did. Unless you have dementia or something. Yeah, so the memory of you will begin to fail as you forgive. Amen. Now we're rich because of our time. Listen. Maybe one day we'll have to be clear about tithes and offering. There's a place for tithes. And there's a place for charity. Oh, charity yeah. And the Bible makes that very, 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 very clear. There's a place for tithing, and there's a place for charity. There's a reward that comes from, from tithing. There's a reward that comes from charity. If you ask me which one is the greater of the two, I will tell you that it is not tithing. It is charity. Charity gives you more blessing than tithing. But it doesn't mean that they have to declare tithing. You will sit at home and say, I will take my tithe and go give to people. Oh, yeah, that's you know, what, that, uh, that is what, <laughs> Papa, that is what actually was said. said when right. you are going to church and you have your tithe and you see somebody on the road, Gave the title, you have to. That's what. No, that is what the person said. No, that is what they said. It 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 is what they said